All right, here I'm going to go into the fundamentals of um, the purification of the heart method. This is a, a Taoist method of meditation, and it basically will quiet the mind. It's about uh, basically you're drowning the mind within the breath. Uh, but the question is, what is the breath? The breath is not just oxygen. Um, it's actually the mechanism of breathing itself that we're investigating. In this case, um, not intellectually, but um, by feeling, by inner sense. So the purification of the heart method is very deep and uh, is subtle. The difference between maybe some meditation techniques you have tried in the past is simple yet marked. So it's very um, dramatic if you actually complete this process or if you actually achieve it. Um, once you start to get it uh, subconsciously, then you won't have to try. Uh, but at first you will be trying. But the premise is if you sync the inner ear with the breath, this is the secret to uh, deeper states of meditation. You have to sync the inner ear and the inner sense of breath. So he starts out in this book here. It was by uh, Wu Jin Ching, of course. Um, it's on Amazon too. It's not that expensive, but it's a pretty good book to get. So uh, he's basically talking to a guy. This is a uh, Zhuang Zi, and this is like ancient Chinese Taoist um, alchemist lore, in a sense. But this narrative. This guy comes to him and says, uh, am I purified yet because I have not uh, drunken wine or eaten strong food? And this guy says, Kung Fu Zi, who is supposedly going to be the teacher. He says, well, everybody does this in ceremony. So this is not purification of the heart. He's like, well, what is purification of the heart? So he tells him, he says, uh, your will must be one. Do not listen with your ears, but with your heart. Do not listen with your heart, but with your breath. Ears can only listen, the heart can only contemplate, but the breath is the emptiness, receptive to all things. Tao is related to the emptiness, and the emptiness purifies the heart. So, this is the main process of the practice, and uh, it's very simple, but each line of this paragraph can be analyzed and contemplated for at least a day minimum, really a week or a month, uh, because when he says your will must be one, that's why I said sinking. You have to sink the inner sense of hearing and the inner sense of breathing. That's why he says it's deeper than listening with your ears or your heart. So a lot of this stuff is not easy to communicate verbally. Um, it's going to have to be intuited by the listener. You're going to have to use your imagination uh, because this practice goes beyond words. Um, because this is not like me teaching you how to kick or punch or even how to draw because you can see that. You could follow along, but this is such an internal and private process that it has to be intuited and even uh, transmitted from the teacher to the student, psychically even. Um, so you kind of want to get on this frequency of uh, thought and you'll start to get uh, ideas will start coming to you. You'll just start to understand it. So um, he talks about the food in the, in the first part. He says, uh, because I have not eaten food, uh, wouldn't this be a good thing? Um, so he says, the clergyman would die before sacrificial ceremonies and ancient customs, but that in itself does not guarantee purification of the heart. The relationship between healthy eating and the process of spiritual purification exists only to the extent that a higher degree of physical purity leads to better health. Health in a perfect state generates the most suitable conditions for receiving the sacred force and greater well-being for executing the practice. Purification of the heart is not achieved simply by abstaining from food and drink because if this were the case, the poorest men in the world would be enlightened. Genuine enlightenment comes from within the person and not without. Because you have a lot of people, right, with the health fad, and it's cool. Uh, the health thing is is a good thing. People should get into. But basically, I don't spend too much time on it because I mean, it boils down to a couple sentences. <laughs> you know, eat as less meat as possible. You know, some would say none. I don't eat meat, but whatever. Eat as less meat as possible. Drink as many fruits and vegetables as possible. Pick some favorite herbs and take them. And that's health. <laughs> that's all you have to do. Like As far as that, that the physical, the mundane way. Then there's the breath. And there's the mind. And this is a whole different angle 
on it. So he's talking about, well, that will make you enlightened, though, because a lot of people think, well, I'm just going to, you know, drink these smoothies and kale and watercress and I'll put up my third eye that way and then I'll be enlightened just by my diet. He's like, no, they're making it clear. Yeah, health is good. It's a step along the way. It's a good foundation, but it's not the end goal. And it's not going to complete the process for you. It doesn't work that way. So when the disciple asks what purification of the heart is, and he seeks to find out how to achieve it. Uh, he answers with the method. The will must be single. This is the first condition. He adds that the disciple should not listen with his ears, but with his heart. That's the inner sense, the inner feeling of the breath. And then he says, well, then you got to get past the heart and listen with your breath. Now you're sensing the inner breath itself. So it's very deep process. And um, like I said, it's going to take some practice and doing in order to know what this material is actually trying to convey because you're not going to get it just by the words trust me uh, this stuff this is a powerful technique the most powerful really it, it goes into anapana really which is the buddha process of uh, meditation like the deepest process the most effective and a holistic and harmonic way to practice because you'll see a lot of pictures of chakras and, and you know how people show the uh, spine going up to the brain and the eye of heiru in all these fancy pictures, they point to a truth, but it's very um, confusing and deluding. I mean, because when it comes down to it, this is all about the breath, uh, stabilizing the breath, even reversing the breath back to the state of the embryo it has nothing to do with looking at colorful chakras. Um, so even that becomes a kind of a re exoteric religion, right? That's why I don't talk about that stuff too much. I go to the root of the issue, the core of the solution, you know. So it's about the breath and it's about sinking the inner ear and the inner breath that is what this is about so again uh listening with the heart the inner sense second step then listening with the breath is the final step the deepest step and that's when you go into this experience of no self of uh no body mind and that's even hard to convey in words if i say you'll experience no self that's a contradiction but you'll have to experience it to know what I'm saying. And I'm sure some of you have stumbled across this feeling or the sense, but have um, lost it, you know, temporarily because of the mind, of course. So to have a single will is to have a will which does not disperse and is concentrated on one single goal, keeping the mind on the breathing. So combining the mind and the breathing, and I'm explaining that in a different terminology to get you to see what they mean by combining the mind and the breath. That means that sinking the inner breath and the inner sense. So listening with the ears is listening with the five senses. Listening with the heart is listening with the single inner sense, like I said, and listening with the breath is becoming one's own breathing. So this is the goal. You're going to become the breath mechanism, not the oxygen, not the carbon dioxide exchange, but you're going to become the breathing mechanism because this is what the real you, which is non-local, non-individual, non-unique. This is what we or you are. We as you, you as we. We are this breathing mechanism and we actually share this mechanism. It's all in sync with everybody right now in the world, on the world, on this plane. So the method works in three stages, concentration, contemplation, and fusion. He who manages to become his own breathing reaches the last stage and finds purification of the heart. So the purpose is to become the breathing. And this could take weeks, months, years of practice, but it's worth it. Um, this on top of the skeleton meditation they actually combine with each other once you can become aware of your inner skeleton your inner you know contents then uh, combine with this breathing and this uh, purification method you'll start to get it so Taoism teaches that the human being is made up of four elements Jing, Qi, Shen, and Jing which is essences, breath, spirit, and nature the objective of Shen Fao or Shin Jai Fa is to use the Jing, which is physical body, to unite the Shin and Qi, the spirit and the breath. So Shin would be like the spirit. That's like your awareness, um, which is actually kind of electromagnetic and can be guided by what they call the Yi, the wisdom mind. You can guide this electromagnetic energy throughout the body. And the Qi, of course, is the breath, but it's not the oxygen. It's deeper than the oxygen. Think a little deeper than that. Until the Jing, which is the nature, is reached. Nature, the ground of existence, the pure ground of existence, not nature as in what we think of as nature as an outside external environment. 
So when this union is achieved, the practitioner completes the three stages of the method and is fused with Jing, which is nature. So once you become the breath, you're fused with the absolute ground of existence. Like I said, that's that circle in Zen. It's a complete breath. It's no inhalation or exhalation separation. It's one breath completely. Um, that's eternity in a sense. Our breathing is in and out. It's broken. They call it a mortal breath. Like, because you're breathing like a mortal. That's what they say, you know. So, the first stage of the method is concentration. He says your will must be one. It corresponds to the stage at which the practitioner is listening with his ears. Then the exercise begins of focusing the mind on the air which is breathed. At this stage, he perceives the noises and movements of the air in his respiratory tract as if he were outside his own body and hearing the respiration through a stethoscope. So this is one of the main keys and tricks. Um, you want to imagine, you can imagine that you have a stethoscope on and you're listening to your own heart. So you place that uh, that metal part to your uh, heart area. And what would you hear? You want to pick up a rhythm internally and listen to that rhythm. This is the first step. This is the will becoming one, sinking the uh, inner ear and the inner breath. So consciousness becomes separated from energy like the spectator who looks at a body to which he does not belong. So almost like you're going to be outside of yourself as a third person observer. This is the first step. If it becomes out of rhythm, then gasping and suspended, you got to increase or reduce the degree of concentration. So if you're trying too hard or not trying enough, this is part of the training, but you got to remember it gets easier and easier every time because the subconscious mind and the brain neurons or the plasticity of the brain, whatever you want to call it, it's going to train itself into new connections and new structures. That'll make it easier. Like I saw this kid who's seven years old, he stacks cups. You know how he stacks cups and uh, destacks them. He can do this in five seconds where he used to do it in two minutes. He's trained his brain. His brain is trained to do this. So this is the same thing. It gets easier and easier. At first it's intimidating, but got to keep trying so this effort will cause the practitioner to become naturally detached from all the manifestations of the mind and eliminate all disordered thoughts which are transformed into one single concentrated thought maintaining natural breathing this is the meaning of Zhuang Ji's words when he says your will must be one <laughs>